Welcome back to Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. I'm Shannon, and I recently finished the second semester of my junior year in college. One of the classes I took this past semester was Comic Books in American Culture, taught by a very talented comic book artist who's done work for both Marvel and DC, and even has a new horror movie coming out soon starring Malcolm McDowell. I won't say his name here, but I will say that I recently spoke with him about getting a tour of his studio for the channel, and talking to him about his life in comics. That video will hopefully be coming very soon. As part of the class each week, we had to do presentations over different eras in comics, beginning with the Platinum Age, and eventually making our way through the current age of comics, and what we thought the future held for the medium. This all ended with a final term paper going into a deep dive for a specific topic. The one I chose was How Ghostbusters Changed the World, which you can find right here on the channel. The more of these we did, the more I was tempted to make my presentations from class on the channel. So that's what we'll be doing today. This is the culture of comics. The Platinum Age of Comics has no official start point, as it's considered pre-superhero comics and can encompass pulps, penny dreadfuls, and novels, as well as early myths and legends which helped to inspire comics. The Platinum Age did however last until 1938 when Action Comics No. 1 was first published and introduced the world to Superman. While there is debate over who the first official superhero was, there is no doubt that the first official comic book was The Yellow Kid, which was first published on February 17, 1895 by the newspaper New York World. The use of the character to sell newspapers is where the term yellow journalism originated, better known today as clickbait. Before that, however, it can be argued that the Georgian and Victorian eras of culture is where the Platinum Age can be said to have officially began. In 1837, the people of London began reporting sightings of a creature that would jump through the London skyline at night and attack women. The urban legend later became the huge influence on popular culture in London and eventually made it into fictional publication in the Penny Dreadfuls, which were precursors to pulps and comics in 1886. In 1844, The Count of Monte Cristo was brought into publication. The Count was the precursor to Batman, Zorro, and the Punisher, and elements of each can be found within the story of a man who was framed and wrongfully convicted, imprisoned, learned to fight, escaped, amassed a fortune, then developed a secret identity to get revenge. In 1905, the Scarlet Pimpernel established the idea of a hero with a secret identity trope in popular culture. The character was a wealthy man who wore a mask and rescued people from the guillotine. In 1912, John Carter of Mars made his first appearance in A Princess of Mars. The character was the precursor to and became one of the inspirations for Superman. The same year, Tarzan of the Apes was first published in magazine form and set the stage for Heroes of the Underserved. In 1928, Buck Rogers became the first science fiction hero during his first published story in the novella Armageddon 2419 AD, which set the stage for other sci-fi heroes such as Flash Gordon, Adam Strange, Green Lantern, and Luke Skywalker. Shortly after, in 1930, The Shadow made his debut in the Detective Story Hour via radio and then made his physical appearance in The Pulps in 1931, then later made his first comic book appearance in 1949. The Shadow went on to become one of the inspirations for Batman. His impact on the character was made canonical during Steve Orlando's Batman The Shadow crossover in 2017, where the writer made The Shadow one of Bruce Wayne's mentors during his time training to become the Dark Knight. In 1931, Dick Tracy hit the scene via newspaper comic strip. The impact the character had on pop culture not only paved the way for James Bond, but also every other crime drama and spy thriller out there. It also inspired the Eye Watch when the title character first spoke into his radio watch. The character made his first comic book appearance in 1936. In 1933, the Lone Ranger first appeared on radio, in comic strip form in 1938, and in comic books in 1948, and was inspired by the real-life Texas Ranger by the name of Bass Reeves, who was one of the first African-American lawmen in America 
America and was notorious for being incorruptible to the point that he even arrested his own son and took him to the noose for hanging. The Lone Ranger went on to inspire the Green Hornet who was revealed in comic book continuity as the great nephew of the Lone Ranger. In 1933, Doc Savage, the Man of Bronze, came on the scene and is regarded by many as the first superhero. He was one of the inspirations for Batman, as well as Superman, and even introduced the concept and name the Fortress of Solitude in pop culture. That same year, the prototype for Superman came to print with the Reign of the Superman. In this pulp, the Superman was a bald telepath who used his powers to take over the world. In 1934, Lee Falk published Mandrake the Magician, who was the precursor and inspiration for future characters such as Doctor Strange, Doctor Fate, Zatanna, and the Scarlet Witch. Also that year, Alex Raymond published Flash Gordon, who was inspired by Buck Rogers. Gordon went on to become a pop culture phenomenon, especially in the 80s, with his movie and theme song performed by Queen. In 1936, Lee Falk published The Phantom, who was the first hero with white eyes and circus strongman style tights. The character was inspired by Zorro and Mowgli from The Jungle Book and went on to inspire other comic book heroes like Batman. It's just always the hardest part, dude. Yeah. And I my voice just cracked. And then, and then like, once we get past the intro, it's just, it just flows. Shannon here, and we're going to do a little contest. Uh, I have here, though priced fairly cheap, uh, some really cool comics. Year 3, parts 1 through 4. What's the significance of Batman Year 3 storyline? The first appearance of Tim Drake, who'd go on to be the second Robin in the Batman comic books. So, yeah, I know. All right. <laughs> I'll start over. <laughs> I was Get excited friend. about it. Say, like, hey guys. Boom. Yeah, just remember Jason Todd. You got to kill him. Do I need, do I need to hold it like this and be like the, the price is right people? Like. So here we go. We've got an awesome contest for you. Don't lean forward. <laughs> you were the beating that man sandwich. Does it again. <laughs> so. Hey, look. <laughs> we have here an awesome contest for you. Somebody, some, right, some ass clown decided every week they're going to do five dislikes on the series. If you dislike the show, that's fine. We're okay with that. You're watching the show at least. If you like it, you're liking it, giving us thumbs up, even better. But if you're disliking the show, by all means, please let us know why you dislike it, why you're not a fan of the show, although you keep watching it every week to dislike. Um, even better, we will welcome you onto the show and discuss why you don't like the show. Um, we just want to know what we need to do to get better. What you like on the show. What you and if like. you're just doing it to be trolls and kiss our ass. I think I want to see you naked. <laughs> Here comes the band hammer. <laughs> so, alright, let's get on the screen. Alright. <clears throat> you can't even see me when I've been right. born to look at the screen. I was just wondering. Where do we see the log in here? Stand over here. Let's squeeze it. <laughs> <laughs> So violent. <laughs> we can scoot over. We can scoot over. I just love it. There we go. All right. <laughs> Ooh, that's just too much. Yeah. 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 Three, two, one. If you like this episode of uh, Come Again, feel free to give us like, share, and subs. Hit that sexy subscribe button down below. Not this sexy subscribe. The one at the bottom of the screen. Not that one either. He's off limits. No screen resolution. <laughs> and we'll don't out. forget to head on over to our Facebook page and give us a like there as well. The link will be in the description. The link to the past. 
Yeah. You're hard. It's cold in here. Hmm. So put on all your clothes. Oh, you're getting so cold. <laughs> Why do you kneel? I'm supposed to scream what? Applesauce, bitch. I'm supposed to scream what? Applesauce, bitch. Apple what? <laughs> what? 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 You want me to say it? I'll say the damn line. I'll say it right now. Oh, hell yeah. Applesauce, bitch. We're just situating a higher apartment next week. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's good. They want me to give them applesauce. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you hit the subscribe button right there so you stay up to date on all things geek culture. Also, go ahead and check out one of these two playlists on the side for more videos just like the one you just watched. I'm Shannon for Comic Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Take care, geeks.